He will join us or die, Master. Hi guys and uh, welcome to another video on the Anywhere But Ours channel. So this video is going to be my review for Series 2, Episode 5 of The Mandalorian. Uh, I've just watched it this morning, first thing, and I'm just blown away by it, to be honest. It was an, another amazing episode so far this season. We've just had one episode after episode after episode after episode, and each one just... It's just amazing. Like I've had literally no complaints about any of the episodes so far, and again, <laughs> no complaints. It's just amazing, just the way the continuity of the story, how they're progressing it, and... Uh, just everything's coming together and everything we want to happen is happening and it's just at this point is amazing and yeah i'll just go into it and kind of go through the episode and my thoughts and stuff like that so yeah let's go yeah so this episode was just outstanding really so how it kind of we we knew from like the for the the week prior that this there was going to be some sort of ahsoka payoff in this episode and usually when that happens we have an episode where kind of mando does some sort of quest and then it leads him on to ahsoka and then we get that payoff towards the end of the episode like what happened with boa in episode one but uh that just didn't happen and we got this massive payoff before the title scene like we saw ahsoka had this amazing scene where she was just like some sort of huntress in and out of the shadows cutting through these troopers we saw lightsabers we saw just her becoming one with like her surroundings and all that sort of stuff and this was before the title scene and it was i was just like wow so this is going to be one of those episodes is it and it turned out that it was and it was just amazing and the fact that that happened it kind of set the scene for the rest of the episode straight away because we got introduced to this sort of uh settlement some sort of town city whatever you want to call it and they had this woman this leader who uh it was even in the uh description for the channel where it was like she was the the, the city was ruled by a cruel magist magistrate and you could kind of get that feeling instantly from the from this this, this scene setting the scene before even the title sequence because she had so much like authority she had people she had prisoners you know the it just looked dark and gloomy and all that sort of stuff which then instantly changed when everything kind of happened later on in the episode but i'll touch on that later just like the differences in like the shot and stuff like that but you could see straight away that this uh settlement they had troopers they had droid troopers they had uh some sort of hired gun guy who was stood at the top with the troopers at the start when they had uh that kind of standoff with the soaker at the start and yeah it was just just to make this all this to happen before before even the title sequence was just was just amazing and then we obviously get the, the introduction and then mando and the child comes in they land on the planet and it's just like we don't know at this point which way it's going to go obviously he goes into the town and he kind of has this uh exchange with the magistrate where he she tries to hire him to kill Ahsoka and she's like but this Bespin uh Beskar spear not Bespin Beskar spear so the, the same material that his armor is which is obviously I've touched on in previous videos how it keeps le referring back to how precious and important this sort of material is and he, he she has this this entire spear made of it and he, that's would be his payment for killing Ahsoka Obviously, Mando has his uh, other motives to see Ahsoka anyway, so he's like, yeah, cool, I'll go find her. And then he's, like, searching through the uh, forests with the child, and then we just see Ahsoka kind of jump in and attack him with the lightsabers, and his armour blocks him. And at this point, I'm not sure on any of the kind of expanded sort of lore and stuff like that, I had no idea that Beskar armour or Beskar material could block lightsabers i was just like wow that's that's amazing which you can't you see more later in the episode as well but it was just again it shows the value of it which just keeps growing and kind of more and more each episode and then we uh we uh see the uh the coming together of ahsoka and the child and this was really interesting because after that uh they had or some they had a discussion even though it was it was almost silent when it was happening at this point i thought it was they were just communicating through the force because obviously the child is force sensitive and 
but obviously Ahsoka is as two being a Jedi but it turns out that wasn't the case because then further on in the episode she asks is he still connected to the force so how they were communicating uh, I'm not sure maybe Ahsoka dust I'm, I'm, I'm presuming that's the way I'm not sure but then we learn that uh, the baby Yoda the child actually has a name and Grogu is the name and it's growing on me because it's we as fans have always called him Baby Yoda we've always called him we've always he's always been the child but he's always been Baby Yoda to us we've always called him Baby Yoda and I guess we sort of had this idea these expectations or this I this kind of idea for a character or the character that is the child or Baby Yoda that he was just this cute little baby Yoda character and he was he just stood sat there in the kind of doing these funny things here and there always eating and stuff but it turns out that he has just been uh, I guess misunderstood up until this point because there is no there is a clear lack of communication between Mando and Grogu <laughs> they're not able to obviously communicate as easily as he was with Ahsoka so he's no, he's never been able to even portray his own name to him for example and the fact that, that we have this exchange between Ahsoka and the child and we learn that <clears throat> he is actually intelligent he can ha have a communicate <coughs> sorry he, ha he can have a communication with Ahsoka he can say his name you know we don't know what else was said in this kind of exchange but then when Din learns that Grogu the child's name is actually Grogu and he says it he he instantly kind of uh, acknowledges it and I think that's really just interesting again it shows the growth in the character and I think we're going to continue to see more growth in the character that is Grogu and better get a kind of better feeling for it and a better understanding for what because we've got a bit of a backstory where uh, he was telling Ahsoka about the he was trained at the Jedi Temple on Coruscant and he was hidden when obviously like Order 66 was happened and obviously taken away by someone but his memory is then fuzzy blanked or something like that and it's just I guess we're going to get that story as this story progresses as he gets a better connection to the force his uh, understanding of what's happened and his memories I guess may come back and she kept um, sorry Ahsoka kept referring back to she could sense fear in the uh in Grogu, in the child, because uh, she's, he's grown this bond with Mando, which is, we've obviously seen since series one, and I've touched upon it in my previous videos, where it's a very uh, parent-child sort of bond, and we kind of got a, a great representation of that when we saw had the Frog Lady episode, it was parent-child, Baby Yoda, and Mando, like, the, the similarities between the two with the eggs and stuff was, was quite clear at that point, and the fear, obviously... Ahsoka's experienced that when obviously the Anakin kind of fall to the dark side and stuff and fear and anger and all that sort of stuff so she doesn't obviously want to train him get him more connected to the force and then something like that happened as well and then we got the kind of payoff where she was like oh I've only ever seen one person of this species before and it was Yoda and obviously this guy is a baby version so I guess that's the kind of payoff for the baby Yoda sort of hints and stuff like that which was great um, and then she obviously questioned uh, Mando does he have a connection to the force which is kind of then confused because that's how I thought they was communicating but there must have been another way and he probably the only way Mando knew how to kind of describe that was his powers which makes sense because he he had no real understanding of what the force was at this point and he's like yeah and he, he still has access to those sort of powers but um, they have this test where Ahsoka's trying to um, bring them out of him with the stone and it's quite funny actually because she like passes the stone onto him and he just drops it and then she gets more realisation at this point that um, the child and Mando have such a, like, a strong bond and then we see it even more when he brings this ball that uh, Grogu was playing with at the start with the ship and he actually then shows the force and that kind of solidifies her point that he has this this, this bond and it was the bond between Anakin and Padme that kind of led to his demise like he created his own demise by having that bond with another person such a strong bond as well which would that would it just make sense that you'd be quite fearful of that bond then taking taking it under control of 
Grogu's kind of character. Say if Din was to get in trouble or die and then he go down spiral into the dark side and so on and so forth. She doesn't want to experience that again with another sort of force being and Jedi, which she touches upon, which is why she says, I can't train him, I can't train him. But they make some sort of deal and then he says to Ahsoka, like, I was supposed to kind of, um, I was sent to kill you, but you know, I'm not going to. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to, you to train this guy and then she inquired about the, the uh, magistrate and the city and stuff like that and they, they worked they decided that they're going to work together and head back to the, the to, to the town and this this kind of next sequence was just amazing we saw Ahsoka just cut through more people uh, in terms of like the, the sentry she kind of jumps on just destroys them destroys the 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 drum almost that the kind of the warning drum and she just makes light work of them she just cuts through and one just tries to run away and then she kind of drops in to the city and she's just walking and there's a massive there's a there the the uh the bad guys are referred to them as and the magistrate and her droids are all just stood there there's loads of them and she's just like i've killed she throws the best car armor on the floor the shoulder plate and says you failed um you know it's me against you sort of thing and then they kind of chase her off and then Mando comes in. It's obviously the team. They teamed up, and it's just amazing. Uh, Ahsoka again would see that sort of her huntress kind of in and out of the shadows, cutting through these guys, and then she comes to face off the magistrate. And obviously, then we learn. We already know by this point the best guy steal. Well, I learned at this point. I'm not sure you guys obviously may know more just due to the expanded universe reading more into it and stuff like that, but. There was going to be a duel between Ahsoka and the Magistrate, and at this point, I thought it was really interesting because she'd uh, touched on it. She mentioned it before. She was like, "Where is your master?" I was like, "Hmm, is she referring to uh, who's she referring to at this point?" I was like, "It can't because is it Vader?" But I was like, "It can't be Vader because this is after the Death Star, right? Uh, after the Death Star explosion. So who who is the master? Is there something we're missing here?" And then we can. I, I presume this payoff is towards a Ahsoka series coming or uh, Ahsoka films. I get. I'm presuming it's going to be a series because that's what's obviously really working for Disney Plus at the moment. And I, we was touching upon this in my Escaping Reality show about how we, me, how I want Disney to kind of take a, a Marvel approach with the Star Wars universe and trying to make all these shows and films into into interconnect and Mark was also of the same opinion he was hoping that you know that's the kind of the route to go down and if this is the route they're going to go down with more Ahsoka series obviously we've got the Kenobi series like they can kind of drop all these characters here there and everywhere it, it makes the universe we get all those different stories but it makes it all connected which is what everybody kind of loved about the Marvel films and if that was to happen it'd be amazing and the reason that I, I presume this kind of payoff happened because she asked where's your master where is Grand Admiral Thrawn and that kind of, that in itself just spells well that can't be touched upon in the Mandalorian episodes unless he's going to join you in this sort of and he, he's got his own journey so I'm presuming and I'm hoping it'd be amazing if it was because Ahsoka like bossed this episode it was amazing uh, Rosario Dawson played an amazing part in it and I uh, thought like the duel itself was amazing she loses a lightsaber so it's not like she just overpowered this this uh magistrate this she had she had skills as well you know but it comes it comes to it they win sorry they win because at this point mando is also having a standoff with the uh, hired gun guy from the start and it, this is throws back to the western vibes as well because it's a standoff and it's like who can draw first that's kind of how mando wins because he tries to put his gun down the other guy tries to draw but mando's just like bah, see you later <laughs> which is amazing and then it's we, we forget at this point that there's another droid kind of walking around and then this this uh, civilian that comes out of his house uh, who we keep, we keep seeing here there and everywhere throughout the episode he he warns him he's like oh watch out behind you and then Dean just headshot turns around headshot straight away you know that's how much skill he's got and he disposes of this droid straight away and then we understand you know they've won they've got rid of this evil kind of hold on this town and this is where I, earlier I touched upon like the scenery at the start it was all dark and everything but at this point they've got rid of the evil which took over this town they've released the prisoners and stuff like that and uh, the the lighting all changes the mood changes the city looks bright again you know instantly which is good you know kind of direction and film taking and stuff like that you can see the clear kind of 
change in scenery and it's gone from dark to light you know it's better it's a happy place now and the guy that we see throughout the episode I, I presume he becomes like the new magistrate because he has this like kind of ceremony and had this thing on and then we kind of had the last exchange between Ahsoka and Mando at this point which is why I'm presuming they, uh, they're they going to do an Ahsoka series or film I'm hoping again it's a series because I just I love the kind of series outlet and we've obviously got further films in the future coming which are from different timelines so a series would work in the way they're trying to interconnect all these stories which is going to be great but the kind of she says I can't train him but if you take him to Tithe on this planet uh, there's an ancient temple and it will be up to Grogu it will be up to the child if he wants to kind of continue on his journey to the connection to the force there'll be a, a moment on this temple where you place Grogu on this on, on the temple I can't remember on the spire at the temple or something and she, she mentions that there's that he'll get the hit this will bring a connection to another Jedi where but there's not many Jedi left so who's that going to be is it going to be Ezra is it going to be Luke who who knows who it could be their possibilities are endless at this point it's amazing to fact it's just just so much ambiguity about who could who could be this Jedi and uh, it's just amazing again I may not I might I might Ezra could be the guy hiding on Tython at this point I don't know this might be touched on upon in Rebels I've not watched it um, but this is kind of a closed closed ending for Ahsoka it's like we've met we've done our thing now you're going to continue on to your journey to get Grogu and the child into his thing whether we get revisited with Ahsoka at some point I hope so because she's been an amazing character um, in The Mandalorian I'm talking about but if not we then that kind of even more confirms we're getting some sort of Ahsoka series or films coming up and that's just really 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 exciting because it was this is this episode was amazing like uh, uh, rating i'll go do my rating again it's going to be nine ten out of ten straight away like we got to see lightsabers win <laughs> we got to see more force we got to see battle we got to see mando holding his own against a jedi even though it was his armor at the start that kind of saved him but all these coming together it's just amazing like there has not been one bad episode so far this series for me like at all this just everything's coming together and we've had the Ahsoka payoff now we now what's next is going to Tython but obviously we can't I forgot I, I only remembered towards the end of the episode there's a tracker on the Razor Crest right from what Moff Gideon paid those ship repairmen to put on so where they're going to catch up with him I'm presuming is going to be Tython which would be the next episode or is it going to be I'm not sure but there's going to be some sort of standoff and I'm presuming that's where we get Bo-Katan come back because she's searching for Moff Moff's searching for the child so there's going to be a coming together and I'm really excited for that because this is the back end of the season now we've not seen any of the we've not seen all the footage from the trailers was from the first four episodes so this is like uncharted territory everything's going to be a surprise at this point and I'm really excited for it so yeah 9, 10 out of 10 episode for me. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, what was your favourite point of this episode? My favourite point was probably the Ahsoka payoff and then the potential for her to have her own series when she calls out Grand Admiral, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Like, that in itself is just a massive... It's gonna, the potential for that story is massive. Just, like, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think and... Thank you very much for the support so far on this channel. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content. I've got so much more to come. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing my second game stream and then I've got my show again on Sunday. Um, I'm going to continue to paint the fellowship as well. I'm going to probably try and do two videos a week for that to, instead of one just to get kind of moving and then I'd, I'm enjoying it so I'm going to do more, you know, and you know, just kind of go with that. Um, yeah, so thank you very much guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.